Punch the Timeline. You're listening to Punch the Timeline with Jared, Trent, and Devin. Welcome to the last episode of 2020. It's Punch the Timeline. Jared and Devin here. Uh, Trent, noticeably absent. We're moving on. Coming up, we have Moon Knight from the Dead by Warren Ellis and Declan Shelby. Great, great book. We have so much to talk about when we come back from the break. Moon Knight from the Dead. Punch the Timeline will be right back after this. Welcome back, everybody. Hope you you like that role. Do you like comic books? I like comic books. Do you like stories that just blow your fucking mind? Do you like... like Mind fuck? Do you like Warren Ellis? Yeah. Do you like a book where the guy comes in, does six issues, and just dips? Because we're talking Moon Knight from the Dead by Warren Ellis. Let me read a quick description from the Amazon. Mark Spector is Moon Knight. Or is he? It's hard to tell these days, especially when New York's wildest vigilante protects the streets with two-fisted justice and three, that's right, count them three different personalities. But even when the mystical forces of Egyptian moon god Khonshu fueling his crusade, how does the knight's greatest detective, ooh, the knight's greatest detective, a little jab at Batman there. Yeah, no shit. Save a city that's as twisted as he is. I read this book for the first time because Trent told me it was the best, is one of his favorite comics ever. And I I was like, okay, whatever, Trent. Whatever, Trent. But when I read it, holy shit. That's all I can say. Yeah, that's pretty to the T because that's really the only thing you can say. For the for the uninitiated, Moon Knight is a. He's been compared to Batman. I don't know why. But he's he's a superhero, who he was killed. He was a mercenary that was killed, and he was near the the Egyptian god. Was it like a statue? Statue of the Egyptian god Khonshu. Khonshu, the god of the moon. And Khonshu resurrects resurrects him, and he becomes a hero. His his typical Marvel costume is like all white and he's got like a hood and a cape and then he's got a full mask. But mostly for this, I don't know what the background is of this because when they're like, hey, I'm jumping ahead. But when they're dealing with the cops, the cops like that's a vigilante. We would not work with the vigilante. That's not Moon Knight. This is Mr. Knight. And the entire time he's dressed up in like this swanky ass Just fucking all white suit. All white suit with a mask with the moon on it. The color. It's slick as fuck. The color on this book, it's almost like the Hawkeye one that we were talking about, where it's like muted colors because it's just most of these things happen in the darkness. Yeah, it's great. And you the first issue is just like a crime scene, and they're waiting on Mr. Knight to show up and it's he's in this white limousine with the crest logo on it and with the no driver with the plate that says Spectre and he just pops out and he's like I'm going to start to investigate this case before we get too far I just this is my my psychology bullshit popping out yes I'm actually really glad that they uh they switched the his diagnosis to the new term because it used to be multiple personality disorder. Right. Now it is they actually did correct it to DID, which is dissociative identity disorder. Now that that's is how it is officially done in uh medical diagnoses now in terms of something of that nature. So it's really nice to see that they are keeping that, you know, accurate. Now, that was a Bendis thing. When Bendis took over or when Bendis like kind of got his hands on things, he's like, I have an idea for Moon Knight that will be unique. And that was the DID thing where he he has like different different personalities based on whatever he needs for whatever um, situation. But in yeah, this that's book... that's talked about later, and I feel like we need to touch on that at least for a second. Yeah, but the, the funny part is like Warren Ellis just took it and was like, nope, you were really resurrected. You're not crazy or you're not, you don't have DID, 
But Warren Ellis, this, the, the way the doctor told him, too, there's like this evil shadow and the angle of it. And it's like, you don't have DID. You were really brought back from the dead. So he's just. Yeah, you just have brain damage. <laughs> yeah. So he's this crazy motherfucker who is solving crime with seemingly unlimited. He's Batman with like head trauma or something. Because each of these issues is just like, there's a problem. Moon Knight comes in. He solves it unconventionally, and then he's out. Like, there's no, like, wrap-up of, well, Chief, this is how we solve this problem. It's just like, hey, I came in and I killed your problem, or I captured your problem. But I want to know from you, Devin, what was your favorite moment in this book? Oh, shit, dude. You had the format, you know. <laughs> is it know. that is it that hard to narrow down? It's really hard because like just seeing the different as like I actually I know this isn't technically like it doesn't really have him in it, but I liked the opening of two of book two a lot. I liked the eight different panels with the eight different people. Just and then like as each one is killed. You get a, a blurp of text and it just goes through each and every one until every page is, or every block is gone. And I thought that that was a fucking awesome, awesome like artist use. Yeah, that, that, that issue is called Sniper, which that one is just like, that's the only time you really see him in the kind of traditional Moon Knight costume, but this one has more black to it. My yeah, favorite. It's almost like a, like an upgraded tech version. Yeah, my favorite was the next issue, which I'm trying to scroll to to give you the proper name. Oh, uh, Box. Oh, no, no, not Box. Oh, shit, it's the so fourth. It's fourth. No, I'm doing the same thing. Oh, that armor in Box, though. God, yeah. Really, where he's... It was metal as fuck. Let's just talk about Box real quick. He is, uh, there are some ghosts that are attacking people, and he goes up to fight them, and like he goes to punch them and it goes right through them and they just beat the shit out of him. And he goes back to his house and, and Khonshu speaks to him and he's like, you know why you couldn't hit them. They're ghosts and you need me. And he comes back in this bizarre, like old school, like Khonshu costume. Well, literally it's like, he said, you have all this stuff to deal with the living and you're telling me that you don't have anything to deal with the dead. So he shows up in this armor that's got fucking literal bones on it. <laughs> and that Khonshu mask. And then he just like, when he first makes contact with that first ghost and just like splits their head in two. And it's just, the dialogue in this is so like, it's funny, but it's not meant to be like, ha ha. Because he's like literally beating the shit out of ghosts, and he's like, "I hate ghosts," and, it, and it's yeah. just the this book is it's also like tragic. There are a couple of endings where you're like, "My God!" I mean, the ending of Box itself was pretty sad. The ending of Sleep was sad. That was the one that oh, fucked the with me of the Sleep most. Was super fucked, but it was like that one was amazing. Like, if I had to pick my favorite one, it was probably. It was probably that one. Sleep is a trip because he's just like, I tried to explain it to Julie and she was like, what? Like I could tell she couldn't quite grasp what I was saying, but I laughed so many times. Like when he snaps out of that sleep, when he figures out what's going on and he like kicks the door open and grabs that by, by the the hair, just smashes his face into the desk. Like that was beautiful. But that one just ended so abruptly. It's just like, this is what you did. This is what happened. Well, I already had a feeling that it was like that this dude had done something fucked because it what fucking page is this? I don't have page numbers on this damn thing. Um Oh, page 71. The dude has like this really fucking creepy ass smile on the second panel and it yeah. made me very unsettled. I was like this dude's done some fucked shit and I don't even need to like I don't need to read the rest of it. This dude's guilty of something. <laughs> I'm trying to that find. Was right. I was trying to find the name of this fucking fifth issue. Yeah, the fifth. The fifth issue is my favorite. I don't even. It doesn't even have a name. It just starts with him like pulling up in his limo and pulling a knife on a guy, and he's like, "Hey, you took a girl, and I need to know where oh, she right. is." The fifth issue doesn't have a title for the first one out of all of them. It reminds. Okay, so the premise is he pulls up. He pulls a knife on this guy, and he's like, 
you took something last took someone last night oh that is not a fucking knife dude that is a traditional egyptian sword yeah that is a kofesh he puts a large large that's not a knife this is a knife kind of fucking knife at this guy's chin and he's just like tell me how many people there are tell me where the girl is i'm going in and yeah, it's that's like i could go upstairs to the roof i'm just gonna kick in the front door i'm gonna go in through the front door so it's him going up six floors and just fighting people in his mr knight gear and it reminded me of that daredevil oh, it does have a title does it scarlet 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 is the best of the six issues. It reminded me of Daredevil when he's like going to save that girl. Is that what it is? Where he's like, it's like that first season of Daredevil when he's fighting in the hall, that extended hall fight sequence. Oh, I've seen, see, that's the thing is I've seen the extended hall fight sequence, but I've never actually watched Daredevil. Oh shit. I'm, terrible. I'm bad at watching TV shows. It's good, but it's, I only got through like the second season because it's so there's so many layers to it that it's hard for me to binge and I'm air quoting because you have to absorb it. Like I had to like watch an episode and then like go sit down and just like think about what just happened. But Damn. the the sequence of events where he's just like he goes through and he fights them with every weapon he has and then he runs out of weapons and he just like grabs a baseball bat and he's just yeah. he kicks when he kicks that guy so hard he pukes. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh and he fucking takes that dude on the stairs after he breaks his ankle flips him over and literally snaps his fucking back in half on the railing oh god <laughs> the pan okay he launches a fucking moon shuriken like through the bottom of his jaw and out his mouth and then he hits that one dude in the foot and the guy like just face plants but it's just like this this man is looking for a fight and he is craving some violence and he gets it. Because when that guy he opens that door and the guy has the two knives and he's like he throws one of his little moon crests at him and the guy blocks it and he's like, Nice. And then they just like go at it. Like this he fucked up his they fucked up his tie though. Fucked up his tie. He just like broke some of his weapons. But this and then he straight up walks in with that bat and he's like, all right, now you could shoot this girl or you could kill me. Like he just talks him out of shooting. This guy is hauling this girl hostage and he's like, you could kill her. You could shoot me, but she's already a loss. Like you better make the right decision. And the guy hands him the gun and he clocks him in the face with the bat. And that's not even the most hardcore thing he does. After he tells the girl that everything's okay, he literally directs his drone to hit a man running away. Oh, yeah. Literally, it doesn't even hit him. It literally slams his body into the roof. And then as this man is dying, Moon Knight, Mr. Knight, bends down and he's just like, he wants, I want you to tell your friends, when you see me coming, run. Like, that is my favorite issue of this run. It was really good. Okay. But I really I did really enjoy six though. They're all good. That's the thing about that's this. The thing. They're all fucking amazing. It's like in and out, like Warren Ellis just like did straight up did six issues and then just bounced. Now six I don't think has a title, actually. Alright. No, it does not. This is gonna be another tough thing to do. What was the panel that just stood out to you? What's the one panel that just popped? Oh fuck. Dude. Do you want me to do mine while you are? Yeah, you do pondering? yours. Let me kind of flip back through here and see if I can really make a definitive answer. Because for me, it's it's probably, and I put it on Instagram, it is a full page splash of issue number five. And it's him standing there. It's a shot of him. It's the back his back it's like looking at him looking up at the six floors of this building like knowing that he's got to get through all these guys to get to that girl that's the one that really stood out to me but the art in this is amazing so there's pretty much not a wrong answer so this one may not be as crazy as yours but i'd say mine's probably in the fourth book and it's right when he falls asleep 
and goes into that he just, crazy ass fucking fades. spore world. He just like falls to the floor into that. Yeah, that was a trip. Dude, it was so fucking metal. It's so vivid and just like, ugh. It makes you like uncomfortable, but you're amazed at the same time. It makes your nose hurt and makes you worry about mold. Yeah, no shit. In this time of COVID-19. <laughs> and now we're like, fuck, what if there's mushrooms growing out of my eyes? All right. Um, so we're working on a new format here. So I've kind of like, we're picking out the things that stood out. We're trying not to deep dive. But the uh, I put things that missed. With, but there wasn't anything that missed in this book. No, that's the thing is like, there weren't gaps in any of the story. The the um the dialogue was good and usually to the point like it wasn't super like ooh what about this and this and this it was just like here's this now he's going to go beat the fuck out of some people yeah it was it's very violent it's very to the point and he just he almost like scolds people as he beats them yeah which i guess we're supposed to be like oh he's so crazy and he's just but but i'm like this guy's a badass he's saying He's the parent that's not just disappointed. They're also mad. <laughs> so there, were, there weren't even any panels that just like, like when we talked about Hawkeye, that wonky-eyed Maria Hill. <laughs> yeah, that wonky-eyed Maria Hill was like the one that stood out in a not good way. The panel, there's no panels that just like weren't right. So we'll skip to a final verdict. Dr. Devin, do you recommend this book? Oh, Absolutely. This was probably one of the best collections that I have read. And the only reason it doesn't beat out Hawkeye for me is because Hawkeye is just my character. So I, I, I can respect that. But yeah, this is totally a book you should read if you are if you've got Comixology Unlimited or if you've got Marvel Unlimited or if you want to try something find it. If you yeah, it's hard to get a physical copy of this fucking thing. I wonder why there were only six issues. <laughs> but People were if, like, I want this forever. If you are into Moon Knight, or if you're in, if you want to check out something off the wall Marvel that's not just Spider Man or X Men, seek this book out. And I would almost say, uh, if you like Spider Man or X Men, you should check this out because he does cross over into those universes every now and again. Every now and again, yes. This is our last episode of the year. This will technically be the last episode of season one. We're just going to go every year as a different season. So, Devin, you uh, you started this as a fan. You you end it as a member of the team. I want to thank you for joining. Appreciate you. I, I want to thank you for formally inviting me on. And awesome. It's been super fun. It's not something I ever really thought I was going to do because I didn't have the intelligence, I felt like, <laughs> or the, the uh, structure to really get some a podcast going. But I'm glad that I get to be a part of it. Uh, we want to thank everyone who's listening uh we see you we hear from you uh with just looking at the podcast stats you know like been in like three countries according to spotify at least from spotify we were in three countries you heard our beautiful voices all over the united states we're in canada thank you please like if you enjoy this and you're on apple Podcasts, leave us a review tell us what you want to hear tell us what you like tell us what you don't like if you don't like me then fuck off because i'm kind of running shit so <laughs> If you don't like me, I mean, I don't care. Yeah. Deal with it. But sincerely, thank you. Like this has been like we had some great momentum, and then COVID hit. Well, COVID hit. I had a personal COVID situation, and then we had weather out the ass in Oklahoma. So I'm gonna have to drop these like Netflix style, for, like three in a row. But we're coming back. We're gonna be, you know, we're gonna expand. We're getting away from Batman. We're gonna mostly be DC, but. We'll, we'll be checking out some books from all over comics. We've got some special projects that it, that it, they're up here in my brain that I hate myself for. But They're mainly in his brain. We're just kind of going with it. Yeah, the, everybody just smiles and nods with me. They're like, oh, yeah, okay, I'll do that. Like, hoping that I forget. But, all I know is he asked me one question. I was like, well, fuck, now I want to do it. Yeah, I love that we keep teasing that. And we're going to keep teasing that. This is a very long-term thing. When we get to it, it will be something. So yeah, you wanna you wanna pimp that uh, Twitch real quick? Yeah, Twitch streamer, Twitch.tv/slash Good Guesswork. My schedule is not consistent at all right now, 
I was in the process of redoing it, but uh, COVID and holidays and any other number of random things have happened. So once the holidays die down, it'll be a consistent like Friday through Monday schedule, nothing in the middle of the week. But just feel free to stop in, say hi, I play, whatever. And eventually we're going to do a live stream podcast. That's yes. in the plan. I was going to try and test run it today, but apparently I've got some stuff I have to work through on some software problems. And if, so, you, uh, if you are an Amazon Prime member, you have a the ability to subscribe to him for free and give him a little bit of money. Costs you nothing. Costs you nothing. You're already paying for Prime, and uh, it gives you all the benefits of subscribing, like no ads, and uh, I get all the benefits of like you actually paid money. So, win win. So what are you waiting for? Get out there and do it. All right, Devin. I know you've got a Christmas gathering to get to. I do. So thank you, sir. We will see you. Thank you. In the new year. Thanks for listening to Punch the Timeline. We'll throw some Trent commentary in there somewhere, but we'll throw in some very not bad. We'll get him to record some very not bad. We'll throw it in at the end. Why don't we, me and you, why don't we read six more issues of Batman and the Outsiders and come back yeah. very soon? Yeah. Dude, happily. I have been reading wanted to read more of that. I've just been waiting on when you wanted to do it. We're gonna uh Moving away from Batman for a minute because we're that like, doesn't count. <laughs> so the Bronze Age Batman does not count. So we are gonna finish Batman and the Outsiders six issues at a time. I can't fucking wait. Thank you all for listening. I will see you next year. We will see you next year. Subdivisions. Social media. You can follow me on Twitter at Grumpy Old Jared. You can find the podcast on Twitter at Timeline Punch. And you can follow the podcast on Instagram at Punch the Timeline. You can find my social media on Twitter and Instagram at Good Guesswork. And you can follow me over on Twitch.tv as Good Guesswork. I stream over there every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Feel free to drop by and say hi. Social media! Thanks for listening to Punch the Timeline. That's not how we do it in Texas. A not in Texas production.